Family Theater presents Debbie Reynolds and John Lund. From Hollywood, the Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Cliff, starring John Lund. And now, here is your hostess, Debbie Reynolds. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Cliff, starring John Lund. I got to thinking more and more about the mountains as Helen and I drove south along the coast road. They're big here, right on the ocean. Big and endless. You can drive through them for hours, and the picture is always the same. A steep, rocky wall rising up on one side of you, and a sharp, sudden drop falling away on the other. And far below, the Pacific, foaming into the shoals like angry quicksilver, and spraying itself up the cliffside. We just come around a curve and started downhill when I noticed that the steering wheel was tugging to the left. Is anything wrong, Joe? It feels like the left front tire has gone flat. You sure they checked him this morning? Well, everything. Tires, battery, well, We better pull off the road and have a look. Well, is there any place we can? Yeah, down at the foot of this hill there on the left. It's one of those little observation areas. Hmm. Doesn't look very roomy. Oh, sure it is. That's what they build them for. For what? Look at the ocean. Park your car and look at the ocean. Take snapshots. Oh. Send them back to your relatives in the east. <laughs> For somebody with a flat tire, you're sure full of fun. Why, you're no flat tire, honey. Oh, how sweet. That's just a rumor going around the neighborhood. Matter of fact, you're a doll. Well, your observation area still doesn't look very roomy. Oh, you could park half a dozen cars there. Joe, you're getting awfully close to the edge. Okay, okay. There. You feel safe? Hmm. Those rocks down there. Is it flat? Yeah, just about. Did I put the emergency on? It's on now. Hey, you want to unlock the trunk while I get my coat off? We're going to have to change the spare. You think it'll take long, Joe? No, honey, 10, 15 minutes, maybe. Oh, I certainly hope we're off this coast road before it gets dark. Oh, we'll make it, don't worry. Some weekend vacation, eh, Mrs. Krause, huh? <laughs> dandy, Mr. Krause, just dandy. Hey, now, don't tell me... What's the matter? Part of the jack seems to be missing. Oh, no. That black iron gizmo that you set on the ground under this. We can't change the tire without it. Well, how could it be missing? I don't know, honey. Kids playing around in the trunk. Maybe it slipped down back of the suitcase. Yeah, maybe, but I doubt it. Here, balance that on the edge a minute. All right. I want to feel around under the back seat. Okay, go ahead. You don't have to take the suitcase all the way out. Well, you won't have room to get in there if I don't. Well, well don't wrestle it around anymore. It's, it's too heavy. Mm. Any luck? No. Gee, I wish I had a nickel. Just a nickel for every time I told those well, kids to stay side? out of the car. What? The other side. No, no, nothing. Boy, I'm telling you. Is there anything else you could use to brace it? No. I'll have to flag somebody down on the road and borrow a jack from it. Hey, there's a car just starting down the hill. Oh, thank heaven. Come on, honey, let's wave them in. That oh, was a real crate, that car. Over 20 years old. More junk hanging on it than I ever saw in my life. There was a ladder tied onto the roof, a long box strapped on the running board with a garden hose and a shovel sticking out of it, and lashed onto the front of the radiator between the headlights was a lawnmower with its handle sticking up in the air like a flagstaff. I thought the driver, an old fellow, was all alone. 
But as he swung off the road and pulled up to where Helen and I were standing, I saw that he had a little boy, about nine years old, riding next to him in the front seat, his arms wrapped around a small cocker spaniel. What's the matter, folks? Out of gas? No, we got a flat, and part of my jack is missing. <laughs> well, I think we can fix that up. I got one in the back you can borrow. Oh, that's wonderful. I think nothing of it, ma'am. Yeah, these mountains are a bad place to get stuck after dark. Uncle Jack, can I watch? Okay, Sandy, but you and Nemo keep away from the cliff over there. Well, sure, Uncle Jack. Come on, Nemo. And don't make me tell you twice, now. I promise, Uncle Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, you gotta keep right after them. Oh, huh? don't we know it. Oh, you got children of your own? Mm-hmm. Yeah, two of them. Our oldest, Jimmy, is about the same age as your nephew. Oh, Sandy's not my nephew. He's my grandson. That, uh... Uncle Jack business is his idea. He doesn't have an uncle, and he's always wanted one, so I was elected. Oh, here, can I give you a hand with that? Uh, okay. I got things jammed in her. Uh, yeah, it is a little rusty, but I think it'll do the work. Oh, I don't know what we would have done if you hadn't come along, Mr. Uh, Kiefer, ma'am. John H. Kiefer. I'm Joe Krause. This is my wife, Helen. Oh, I'm glad to know you. <laughs> Not nearly as glad as we are to know you. I'm happy Santy and I could be of any assistance. Say, where is that young scamp, anyhow? Well, he and the dog were playing right over there by the road a minute ago. Yeah, I had him in one corner of my eye most of the time. Well, I know he didn't come anywhere near the edge of the cliff. I w- would have seen him. S- Sandy! Sandy! You suppose he might have wandered down the road? Uh, no, no. I, I told him often enough about not getting out on the highways. Say, uh, isn't it a path or something over there? They're back by the road, leading down into the rocks. Uh, let's see. Okay. Sandy! Sandy! I, I can't understand why, why he doesn't answer. <laughs> The minute the old fellow said that, I knew we were into something. You know the feeling it gives you to yell for one of your kids when you know he's close by and not have him answer? Cindy! We started down Cindy! the path through the rocks, the three of us, Kiefer in the lead, calling out to his grandson over and over again. Cindy! Then the ground sloped a little down alongside the observation area and came to a sort of a dead end up against the back wall of the cliff. It was like a pocket hollowed out in the rock. You could hear the surf far below beating on the other side of it. There didn't seem to be any way through down to the beach. Until Kiefer noticed something. A narrow cleft in the rock over to one side. Look, that must lead somewhere. Well, it doesn't look wide enough for anyone to get through. You can see daylight through it down lower. Sandy! Sandy! Hey, he might have climbed down there. Doesn't look too steep. Uh, yeah, listen, that's Nemo. Nemo! Nemo, here, boy! Sandy! Sandy, can you hear me? Uncle Jack! Uncle Jack, I can't climb up again! Well, Sandy, where are you? Joe, the poor little thing. Now, take it easy, honey. Doesn't sound like he's hurt. I can't climb up the rocks. They're all wet and slippery. Oh, we'll get you out, Sandy. Don't worry. We'll get you out. Did he fall? Can you see him? No. I think he climbed down to the beach, but... Oh, well, look, he... It's a little spaniel. How come he can get back up here if the boy can't? Here, Nemo. Here, fella. That's a boy. Oh, golly. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Now, hold on to yourself, Mr. Kiefer. We'll get him out of there. This cleft is open at the other end. Now, if he's down on the beach, he's safe for the moment. No, 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 he's not. The coast along here is all shoals and rocks. The tide's still out. That's why he's on dry land down there. But once the water starts to rise, it'll get him. There's, there's, there's no place he can go. Let's see how narrow this crack in the rocks is. Now, if I can just get my shoulders flattened out, maybe, maybe... <clears throat> oh, not a chance. Joe, huh? maybe I could squeeze through. Oh, I don't know. It looks even narrower when you get inside. Well, let me try anyhow. Okay. All right. I can just get past this one place. Oh, honey, come on. You're going to hurt yourself. No, 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 wait a minute. I can almost... Now, come on. It's too narrow. We'll find another way down. Uncle Jack! Uncle Jack, please come down and get me! You hold on, Sandy. We're coming. Don't you worry. Is it dry where you're standing? Yeah, Uncle Jack, but there's big rocks on both sides going out into the water. Look, there's got to be another way down to that beach. 
We'll take a look over the other side. All right. And don't worry. We'll get him out. Come on, honey. Uncle Jack! We'll get you out, Sandy. Don't worry. Kind of funny the kid can't get back if he got down there. Well, he said the rocks were slippery. Yeah. I guess you have to take his word Joe, for it. Joe, does that look like something? Well, let's see. No, no. It's not even a path. Oh. This whole section along here is nothing but smooth rock. It just drops off right down to the water. I was thinking it... If there was somewhere down to the beach... Well, I don't see one. And, and maybe we could get a rowboat or something. Yeah, and if we had some ham, we could have some ham and eggs. Well, I'm just trying to think... Yeah, that... I know, I know, but there's no path and no boat, so let's forget it. I'm sorry, honey. It's all right. Let's go back and see Kiefer. I didn't mean to bark at you. I know, honey. It's all right. Kids. Boy, I'm telling you, they can do it. They can really do it up. Mr. Krause? Yeah? Did you find anything? No. Oh. I guess that's the only way down. Uncle Jack! Listen. We're right here, Cindy! Listen. Ask him if he can see up the cliff when he looks out toward the ocean. Uh, Cindy? Yeah? Uh, can you look up and see the cliff where you are? I can see part of it if I walk out on the sand toward the water. Have you got a rope in your car? Uh, some clothesline and a few short lengths of horse, but we can't get a rope down to him from here. He, he, he couldn't reach it. Well, I was thinking we might lower it down over the cliff, put a weight on one end of it and swing it under the rocks to where he's standing. Uh, I, I don't think I got that much rope. It'd take almost 50 feet. Oh, oh, oh Lord, I, I never should have let him get out of the car. Oh, hold on now, hold on. How much time have we got before the tide starts to come in? Oh, maybe, um, maybe an hour. Maybe not that much. You stay here and keep calling down to Sandy while we get that rope out of your car. If anybody drives by, we'll flag him down and send for a rescue squad. There isn't enough time for that. No, maybe there isn't. That's why I'm going to get the rope. <laughs> Helen and I climbed back up through the rocks to where the cars were parked. There wasn't a sign of anyone on the road so far as we could see in either direction. Kiefer was right about his rope. Even after I'd tied it all together, it was less than 30 feet long. And all the time I was working, I could hear him down in the pocket alongside the cliff, Sandy! calling out to his grandson, trying to keep up the little guy's nerve. It isn't long enough, is it, Joe? No. Oh, Joe, it's our fault. They never would have stopped if we hadn't waved to them. I know. Don't you think I know? I'm sorry, Joe. I feel so guilty about that kid, I can't even think straight. There's got to be a way. Let's take another look over that cliff. Do you think he's on the beach right below us here? Well, he's below us, but probably over a little. That way. We can only see him. Well, not the way this cliff slopes out. Yeah, that's the problem. But, yeah, I wonder. The face of the cliff sloped down and out for about 20 feet before it cut back under the rocks toward the shoreline. It was like a big awning hanging over that section of the beach where Sandy was trapped. Now, from the top of the cliff, the rope wasn't long enough to reach him. But if someone were to climb down as far as the edge of the slope... They'd be able to look over it, see where he was standing, and maybe pick up enough distance so that the rope would reach him if it were dropped from there. But, but Joe, th there's nothing at all for you to hang on you to. You don't need much. The surface is jagged enough for a foothold. Besides the way it slopes, all I have to do is keep leaning back against it. I can't lose my balance. No, no, Joe, I, I don't want you to do it. You might fall. I'm not going to fall. Well, you might. Well, even if I did, it's just water. I can swim. It's not just water. The rocks are way out on either side. That's not what I mean. I won't even be near them. It's less than three feet of water. It drops off. You can see the bottom, Joe. If you fell from here, you'd break your neck. It wouldn't be from here. It'd be 20 feet less. Well, even so, I... I'll have the rope around me all the way down to the ledge, and I won't take it off until I'm set. Joe, please, it's too dangerous. Honey! <laughs> It's all we can do. You better go get Kiefer while I check this rope. We're going to need him. By the time Helen came back with the old man, 
I had one end of the rope onto the back bumper of our car. I didn't want to put any of my weight on it going down unless I had to, as it was mostly clothesline. But Kiefer seemed to think it would hold Sandy, if we could get it to him. You're going to need something to wake that rope with when you drop it to Sandy. Yeah. Have you got anything like a big washer or something with a hole in it so it won't slip off? I think so. Now, wait a minute. I, I had an old steel brace with a bolt hole punched through one end of it. Yeah, 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 this ought to work. It's not too big, but it's plenty heavy. Yeah, swell. Now, as soon as I get down to the edge of the slope, you untie the clothesline from the bumper and drop it down to me. Okay. But wait till I'm down there before you go and tell Sandy what we're trying to do, Did huh? you really think you can get the rope to him from that ledge, Mr. Krause? Why, Sure. Sure I do. Or at least I couldn't see how it would hurt to say I did. I let myself over the edge of the cliff without looking at Helen. Because I knew that if she told me once more not to do it, I wouldn't. I started down, slowly, feeling for rough places with my feet, stopping to rest whenever I found them. All the time I kept my face pressed against the side of the cliff and my arms stretched out hugging the rocky wall as hard as I could. Couldn't have taken me more than a few minutes to get down to the edge of the slope, but as I sank to my knees and started to unknot the rope around my waist, I noticed something. It had started to get dark. Joe! Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay, honey. We're going to have to hurry, Mr. Kiefer. There isn't much sunlight left. I know. I'll untie this end of the rope and, and drop it down to you. Look. When you untie it, kind of coil it up so it'll drop down in a lump. All right. I don't want it to get away from me. Uh, you bet. Yeah, be right back. Is everything all right, Joe? Yeah, Peachy. Can you see out over the edge? No, I'm going to have to turn around first. I'll wait till Kiefer drops the rope. I'm okay down here. Don't worry. Here she comes, Mr. Krause. I got it. You better go tell your grandson what we're going to do now. Tell him to walk out onto the beach toward the water as far as he can and look up. Then I'll explain what I want him to do. You get that steel weight tight onto the rope real tight? I'm going to put it on right now. Tell Sandy not to worry. Just do as I say. I will. Good luck, Mr. Krause. Yeah. Thanks. I took my time turning around toward the ocean. I didn't dare look down until I was sure I had myself balanced right. Hunched low, almost sitting against the face of the slope, I finally felt secure enough to pull myself forward and look down over the ledge. The first thing I noticed was that the tide had started to creep in. There was a stretch of sand, maybe seven or eight feet of it, that the water hadn't touched yet, but it was bounded on both sides by rocks that ran out into the surf. The rope was our only chance. Then, as I was watching, Sandy appeared from under the canopy of rock below, took a few steps onto the beach, and stared upward toward the cliff. Mister! Mister, where are you? Right here, fella. Can you see me? Wave if you can see me. Uncle Jack says you're going to get me out. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Now listen to me. Pay close attention so we won't make any mistakes. I will. I'm going to lower this rope to you. Can you see it? I'll start to let it down now. I see it. What's that on the end of it? Oh, that's just an iron weight to keep it from blowing around in the air. It's kind of cute, huh? Are you going to pull me up on the rope? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give you a ride. Ever had a ride on a rope? Yeah, that's right, all the way. It's going to cost you ten cents, too. I always charge ten cents for my rope rides. Mister? Mister, I won't be able to reach you. It's out over the water. Uncle Jack says I shouldn't go out in the water. You won't have to. You watch now. I'll show you a trick. Now, I'm going to make the rope swing back and forth a little bit. First, it'll go out over the water like that. <laughs> then it'll swing in towards you like that. And when it gets close enough... Can you reach it? No, I, I almost... No! Grab at it with both hands like a baseball. Now, here it comes again. Oh, I... I touched it. I almost had it. 
Now, once more now, grab it hard and hold on! We got it! We got it! He had it. And the little guy was so proud of himself that he didn't notice he was standing in surf up to his ankles. I got it, mister! Yeah, yeah. Now, can you loosen the rope through that hole in the piece of iron? It's just a big loop if you open it up. Like Hoppy uses, you know. Now, now, I want you to put it over your shoulders and then lift your arms up through it and then pull it tight. You're sort of lassoing yourself, you see? I, I can't make it stand. No, don't let that piece of iron get around in back. Keep it in front so it won't dig into you when I start pulling you up. Mister, the water's making my legs cold. Oh, a big fellow like you isn't afraid of a little water, are you? No. Yeah, that's it. Twist the rope around. Now hold it straight, and I'll pull it tight under your arms from up here. There. There. That's it. That's it. Are you all set now? I guess so. All right. Now, just relax. Hang limp. And here we go. I felt the rope pulled taut and strained as I lifted Sandy into the air. My knees seemed to be clamped against the rock, and the rope wrapped around my hands bit into them like hot wire. I didn't dare look down anymore. I didn't dare think about that little boy dangling out over the shoals below me. I just started to pull and pray. I felt the knots in the rope moving through my fingers as I hauled it up. One, then another, and another... I tried not to think how quickly I'd tie them, or that one loose knot would mean... And then I felt another, and another, and it seemed that somewhere inside me I could hear Helen and old man Kiefer saying... You can do it, Joe. You just gotta do it. You can do it, Joe. You just gotta do it. You can do it, Joe. You just gotta do it. Just gotta do it. I just gotta do it. I just gotta. I gotta. I gotta. <laughs> Him. You can reach him! I looked up from the rope and craned my neck out over the edge. There he was, hanging in space, less than a foot below me. But I couldn't reach down for him without loosening my grip on the rope. My arms were so tired there was almost no feeling left in them. Sandy! Sandy! You're going to have to help now. Can't you pull me up? Not any further. i got to hang on to the rope. Now look. Put your arms out. That's right. Up in the air. I can almost touch you. Yeah, yeah. Almost. Now, I'll lean forward and you grab around my neck. I'll try. There, that, that's right. That's right. Now, lock your fingers. Tight, real tight. That's it, that's it. Now, hold on while I lean back and pull you up. My fingers won't hold. Hold on, hold on. I can't. Oh. Gotcha. You're all right, fella. You're all right. Don't cry. There's nothing to cry about. Hey, look now. You keep on bawling. I don't think you didn't like your rope ride. <laughs> oh, Joe. Joe, you were wonderful. <laughs> Looks like we attracted quite a crowd. That was a pretty brave thing you did, Mr. Krause. No, no, no. We got kids of our own. I know what it's like. Well, I'm I'm not a rich man. I haven't got much, but if there's ever anything I can do... Well, well, uh, say, the, there is something, Mr. Kiefer. I almost forgot about it. The excitement. Anything. Anything I got in the world. Well, uh, well, uh, you suppose... Suppose I could borrow that jack of yours now? The 
This is Debbie Reynolds again. At a little informal gathering the other night, the topic turned to prayer, and a friend of mine was asked, What's the world's best prayer? I thought he would say, The Lord's Prayer, or the Ave Maria, or something like that. Instead, I must confess I was very shocked when he quietly announced, The Alphabet. I thought he must be teasing, but the alphabet is in prayer, someone protested. But he proceeded to prove the opposite. The alphabet, he began, is one of the few tools that man has that's almost infinite in scope. It's an immense treasury. It contains all the thoughts that the wise men of the past have ever shaped and expressed, and all the beautiful thoughts that those yet unborn are going to express. Since God is wisdom uncreated, man needs something as vast as the alphabet to praise him. In its tongueless combinations, the alphabet contains the sigh of the wind, the dance of the rain, the sweetness of growing things, the rush of the river, the unrest of the sea. All of these things, expressed or yet to be expressed, are communications with God according to the laws in which he made them. I began to see what my friend meant. I was almost breathless with the beauty of it, and the others were hanging on to his words. But he didn't stop there. Since everything he added comes from God, we need something of almost infinite content to give him back some of his fullness and perfection. That's what prayer is, giving him back some of his fullness and perfection. The treasures of the alphabet are as yet unexplored. In fact, they are almost inexhaustible, just like the treasures of music. That's why I insist that the alphabet is the world's best prayer and the world's prayer book. For in its limitless combinations, it becomes the cry of finite man to an infinite God language. Isn't this thought beautiful? Family prayer is beautiful too. For the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed The Cliff, starring John Lund. Debbie Reynolds was your hostess. Others in our cast were Lillian Bayef, Herb Butterfield, Richard Beals, and Earl Keane. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of state, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present At 155 Pounds, starring Michael O'Shea, Barbara Hale will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. <laughs>